This should be like a guarantee right here. My bobber should have went under. There we go. You know, this is one of my absolute favorite ways to fish is a swim jig. And that's a long, skinny one, but you know, I started swim jig fishing totally by accident um, on the Ohio River. You know, the Ohio River is a tough place to get a bite anyway, but you know, I had one of them days on the Ohio River where I'd been fishing basically daylight to dark and hadn't had very many bites at all, if any. And uh, I can distinctly remember just, you know, pitching my jig around like, like I normally would. And uh, I can remember reeling that jig back to the boat. I mean, and back then we were using like number 11 Uncle Josh pork chunk, you know. Um, and I can distinctly remember reeling that jig back to the boat and having one about three pounds um, come try to eat it, you know. And on the Ohio River, a three pounder is giant. So then I go back to my traditional flipping and I'm not getting any bites and I can, I'm reeling that jig back in and one of about two and a half pounds comes up and eats it and I catch that fish. So I'm like, you know what? I'm not the smartest man in the world, but I, every time I reel this jig in, one chases it up. So I just started casting it around like a spinnerbait. And the next thing I know, I go from like zero bites to like having 20 bites. Um, and 20 bites on the Ohio River is like unheard of. Um, and that's been, you know, probably close to 30 years ago. Um, so I kind of learned about swim jig fishing totally um, by accident and, uh, you know, have just continued over 30 years to kind of feel like I've perfected that for myself on jigs and trailers and presentations and, you know, things like that. It's, it's one of the techniques that if I'm going out on the water, um, I always got a swim jig tied on. You know, it's springtime, the water temperature is about 55, but 55 to 59 degrees and fish are wanting to spawn. And uh, <laughs> around that spawn time, I feel like if the water's clean, um, there's no better bait than a swim jig. And as you can see right here on this little reed island, there's a clean spot. You know, and anytime you can find a clean spot, that's typically where those fish are gonna wanna set up and spawn. And this time of the year, if you run a swim jig over that stuff, I'm not going to say you're guaranteed a bite, but your chances are really, really good. Mm. See, and this one chokes it, you know? Oh, right in the roof of the mouth, right where you want it. You know, a deal for me is, like during these frontal conditions, I like to do what I call hover a jig or float a jig. I don't like to scoot it along or move it really, really fast. I like to keep it in the strike zone as long as I can. And a tip I can give you for that is use a trailer that's got a, a lot of water displacement that'll help you keep that jig up there. And then go with a quarter ounce head. I know a lot of guys like to swim a 3 8 ounce head, um, but typically for me, it's always a quarter ounce so I can keep that jig in the strike zone as long as possible. And there's gotta be somebody on the back side of that island. I mean, that was kind of one of them perfect deals. You've seen just how I was shaking that rod and fluttering it, just kind of keeping it as slow as possible. And he got it. Good. You can just see him coming from miles away to get it. Like that. <laughs> it is so much fun. If you haven't played around with a swim jig much, there's no no cooler bite just to be reeling that thing along and just they get it. And when they get it, they typically really get it. Now they just need to be like four pounders. You know, typically for me, like if I'm fishing it down deep, it's gonna be that four, you know, four to six foot depth range kind of where you're almost slow rolling it um, over top of the grass or, you know, hydrilla, milfoil, whatever may be there. Um, but much deeper than that, I kind of feel like there's probably something better, you know, chatterbait or something like that. Um, but yeah, there is a lot of times where I'll just tickle that thing right over top of the deeper grass. 
you know, and you can always just kind of listen to the fish. They'll tell you, you know, about what depth range they want. Um, you know, but so many times with a swim jig, you're always around, seems like in the shallows, around grass. Um, typically most of your swim jig fishing, I feel personally like goes down in that, you know, that six foot or less depth range. Um, you know, I don't know, I know some guys that have played around with a half ounce swim jig, you know, out on grass lines and things like that, but um, day in and day out, um, typically I think it's about six foot or less that um, swim jig fishing goes down. Little paws, got him that time. Yeah, All right, you know that fish right there is a prime example of, you know, you watch that fish come up there and wake after it, and just you watched me. I mean, I anticipated that fish coming, and I set the hook and I whiffed him. I mean, I totally missed him. Um, and you notice I threw right back in there and got back on that fish. And the and the tip is here is the faster you can get back on those fish better off you're going to be because typically they're kind of in there like a cat like looking around like hey man where'd that thing go um you know so a, a tip here is when you miss one or see one come waking it um he's typically a very aggressive fish so make sure before you take off that you make four or five casts back in there and if i had not done that i probably wouldn't have caught this fish oh oh <laughs> oh oh Gonna come back and play. Damn it, he got my leg. He must have been a big one. Did he get my other leg? Nope. Not yet. We're gonna work on it one more time. Got him. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Prime example. I missed that fish four times. I know he's not a big one. But some days in a tournament, this fish right here could be very, very important. Took me four pitches right back to that fish. And as you can see, the very first bite, he got my leg on my uh, menace. And uh, I just kept pitching it back in there, and finally we got him. You know, we're in extremely clear water. And typically for me, I always throw my swim jig on 30 pound um, high seas Grand Slam braid. And I was just like, oh, did you see that? How beautiful was that in that clean water? Uh oh, did we lose him? No, we didn't lose him. That was amazing. You know, we talked about when you get the jig combination right, they choke it, you know? And uh, as you can see, that fish got it. I don't know if you got to see that footage on camera, but he come up there in that clean water, just big mouthed it. It was beautiful. And that's a good one. I mean, that water is crystal clear. I need to just sit down and paint my string. Real quick, like. Oh, oh my lord. A lot of times your bites on a swim jig are so fast and so violent, you know what I mean? And then, like, that's why I stress using a high speed reel, because if you can't keep up with that bite, Chances are, if you get a hook in him, you ain't gonna land him. Always, always, always make that follow-up cast. I mean, if you don't make that follow-up cast, you're absolutely lost your mind. It's almost like you gotta get these fish jump-started this way. It's amazing. Oh, doesn't get much better than that. Look at that. Oh, dude, that fish came from that reed clump way out there to get that jig. I mean, I gotta tell you, we're here in Louisiana at Gros Savant and it does not get any better than this.
That was so cool. I mean, they're just like cats pouncing on it. Ooh, got a little salad on his face. <laughs> yeah, we got him almost up. Keep that stuff out there. It had grass on it. You see that line hop? <laughs> he sure looked bigger than that when he. God, man, he's like. He feels like a big old thick football, like holding a brick. Nice.